Hello everyone and welcome to our Coffee and Cam Tech Tip. My name is Nick Nerzenski and today we're going to take a look at how to set up a assembly template with your fixtures in order to reuse them for programming your parts in Inventor HSM. So first thing I'm going to do is browse to your fixturing manufacturers website and most of them will have a download available for 3D so that you can use those vices. In this case I'm going to go right here to the the Kurt Vice 2D, 3D CAD drawings, and I typically recommend using a step file for this. So I'm just going to browse the step file format and click download. And then, what did I do? Here we go. Step file, download, click the link there, and it's going to download as, an S or as a zip file. And then once you have that, you'll want to put it in a location that you can later find. So I've already it on my computer, so now I'm going to jump back over to uh, Inventor HSM and go to Open. And here is that step file that I downloaded. So I'm going to hit Open here. It'll take a second. What you're going to want to do is convert this to a Inventor model. If you click reference, that's using the AnyCAD where you're actually referencing the model and there's actually going to be a link to it. What I'm wanting to do is break the link because I'm going to save this as my own template. So I'm going to select convert model here. Give it a second to do its magic. Open up. Okay. Now the trick is this is actually a multi-body part file currently. And with that, if I try and click and drag everything, it's not grounded, it's not constrained, but they're all locked into their current position. So we want to be able to use this as it would be in our in our table, and, and that is move our, our um, non-fixed jaw here, movable jaw. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Manage tab, and we're going to say Make Components. This is going to take all those body parts and convert them into an assembly file. So simple, I'm just going to highlight using the Windows Select, it found all of those different bodies, and then you can give it a name and a location. I'm just going to go ahead and use the defaults here. Say next. Same here. You can rename them or just say OK. Now you're going to see this is going to open up in a new file, which is a .iam file, with all of those bodies as their own part file in a grounded position. That's what this little pin means over the symbol here in the, in the browser. So with all those grounded, that is typically what I want except for the movable parts. So I'm going to unground the movable jaw by highlighting them and unchecking the ground button there. You'll also see there are some screws uh, and then this, this uh, dovetail type of part that locks into that jaw. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm just looking for visual purposes. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. And it's going to ask you to save the file here. So I'm saving and then deleting the pins. Okay. So now I've just got those parts in there. So I'm going to use joints. If you guys aren't using those yet, you should really take a look at them. They can simplify your workflow quite a bit. So I'm going to just lock the bottom edge, center edge of both of these components. Right there and right there. So I'll put a rigid joint on there. Those two are now locked together. Then I'm going to do another joint on the top edge of both of the plates here so that they can slide together. So for that one, I'm going to use a slider. Pick that point and that point. And you'll notice which way it wants to slide is up and down. I'm going to change that using the alignment tools here. That face and that face. And say OK. So with just two joints, I have that entire vise locked into place. So now I'm going to save that assembly. Click OK. And then what I would do is start a brand new assembly. Because we want this to be a sub-assembly of the master file. Because in the master file is where I'm going to drop my machining component. And I want the vise to already be in there. So I'm going to go New. Start a brand new standard assembly file. And then simply, if you can paste it from the location or I can right click here, say copy, go back into here and say paste. That places it in there as a grounded component. Now, at this point, you may want to realign it, but in my case, it looks pretty good. 
as far as the work corner system goes. Uh, the one thing I do notice though right away with that being grounded is I can't move that jaw even though inside of the subassembly file it was moving. So the trick here is to right click on this and say adaptive. I'm sorry, not adaptive, flexible. You'll get this little symbol over here in a browser telling you that it's flexible. And now even though that, that subassembly is grounded, I can move that fixed jaw. So now we've got everything set up the way we want it to be. Now I'm going to save this out as an assembly template. And if you don't know where that's located, you can simply go up here and say new. And it should default to your template location, which is located here. So just remember that location. Go to file. Save as. And let's see here. I had it open in a separate place so I can look at it while I'm doing this here. But we're going to go to C, Users, Public, Public Documents, Autodesk, Inventor 2017, and Templates. And then I'm just going to call this Kurt Vice. Click Save there. It's telling me this is not going to have to project. That's okay. This is in our temple location. So now that we have that done, we can close these files. And the way that this is going to work is you'll just say new. And you'll see now it's located here in my templates. I double click that. Home the view here. I now have that fixture already inside the sub assembly or as a sub-assembly inside the master assembly. Now all I would have to do is go to place, find, let's see, I might have a part here. Let's use this block. Right click copy, go back to that sub-assembly and paste. I can now just constrain that into place. You can actually use what we call Actually, let's do this first. I'll say joint, rigid. I'm going to use that bottom edge on the face and the top middle edge on this face. It's going to give me a preview here. I'm going to flip that. Oop, wrong flip. Let's do that one there. And then maybe put like a quarter inch, negative quarter inch offset. So now you can see that it's located down inside of my soft jaws. I'll say okay there. And then all I'd have to do is maybe a face constraint or mate constraint between these two. That block is now completely locked into place. Then I can go on and do your job setup so just make sure when you're in an assembly environment, you clear the model, select that model. And I'm just going to place it at the top center. Say OK. And then you're ready to start adding your drilling operations and whatever else you may use. In my case, I'm going to grab a quick template here for quarter 20. Select my hole. Select the hole for that one. And select the hole for this one. So this is going to drill, spot, and tap. My quarter 20 holes here. All right. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Now you can reuse those templates or any of your fixtures and know how to set them up uh, by downloading them from your manufacturer's website as a step file. Also, I may have mentioned this earlier already, but if you can't find it on their website, a lot of times you can email them and they'll send you a step file or a dumbed down solid model as well. Hope this helps, guys. Stay tuned for more.